Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining us in another of our live shows with the Clever Clogs, The Lawful Remedy. I'm Richard Vobes and with me to uh, help get through the show is Karen Dodd. Hello Karen. Hello How are Richard. You? I'm very well today, our third one, so very well, very happy to be here Fan again. Fantastic and uh, very much looking forward to a, a different panel a different set of questions and hopefully mm -hmm. some good stuff coming out. But we just should let you know, of course, this is not legal advice. It's uh, a friendly chat amongst people who've done some stuff in the lawful way. Is that what you say? Yeah, is that, is I, that I a think good that's way of right. It? I know you always say it's entertainment, but I think some good information comes out. It is very entertaining. Yes. Because you are an entertainer and you're well, very funny. Very kind. And we all love you. And, um, and yeah, but it is, you know, we have got people that, I don't know if we can use the word expert these days, but they, they you know, they know their stuff. Yes. <coughs> and, I, I'm only saying that just so that in case people go and they just take something and then, you know, whatever knew, happens, we're mm. just indemnifying ourselves that... Uh, uh, and YouTube, of course, to take this as entertainment. It's lovely to see that there is uh, uh, large numbers of people slowly coming. But again, we had um, uh, nearly a thousand people watching by the end of the show last week. Um, mm -hmm. I dare say we'll have a similar thing. Mm -hmm. And I didn't actually look at the figures for the overall thing, mm -hmm. but we had 18,000 watching Excellent. for the very first one. So um, <laughs> we're hoping to keep that up and um, we'd look forward to your questions. Um, one of the things I should say is if it would help us if you write in capital letters, I know capitalization is a thing, uh, write it in hieroglyphics, uh, question, and then put your question after that. You may have to put it up a couple of times, so copy and paste it a few times, so that we see it because the, the yeah, chat it, goes Yeah, it rolls up, so up quite fast. quickly, doesn't it? Yeah, keep, just keep putting question, keep repeating it, and we'll hopefully we'll get it between us, um, for sure. Brilliant. So, uh, Karen, will you introduce I our will. wonderful <clears throat> panel? Yes, yeah, so tonight, Richard, we have, in alphabetical order, right. allegedly Dave. Okay. Dave, hello to you. Yes, yeah, sorry, I'm muted. Yes, hello. Um, hello. Good to be back. Oh, I've got to make some adjustments here to the screen. There we go. That's better. We can see. It's great to see you, Dave. How how are yeah. things? I'm um, all good. I've I've literally just got off the plane from uh, St Lucia, and uh, <laughs> back in the cold UK. So. Um... Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, brilliant. So that's uh, that's allegedly <clears throat> Dave. Yeah, that's that's our first panelist. Then we have Mick Stott, founder of Guardians Three Three Hundred. Hello, Mick. Hello, Hall. Hello. Uh, nice to see you, although you're a, a little bit silhouetted there, but uh, we can uh, we can certainly see you in in silhouette. Yes, we're in, in silhouette form. It's just a little bit dark, that's all, isn't that's it, all. I think? So but I don't know if there's a light that maybe you can switch. That might make a difference so that people can see. Well, it's a little bit better. Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. Um, it always looks worse on my screen because when I play it back, it, it, it looks much better yeah. on people's things. But I'm sure people can see it. Anyway, see, nice, yeah. to, nice to have you there, Mick. No, thank um, you. And then our third panelist is Tony Rose, who's I think quite new to to what's been going on. He's he's again gone through the ranks, possibly through one of our other panelists. I don't know if it was Chris Covert. Well, he can say hello, Tony. Yeah, hello, Tony. There. And you'll need to unmute yourself, young fella. Good evening. Button at the bottom. Ah. Good, good evening to you all. Yeah. There we go. And how? Where are you? Where are you based? East Sussex. East Sussex. There we go. Down. At, um, I'm in West Sussex. We're and you're not. I'm, I'm East in East. Well, I'm in East Sussex as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah not too I'm far. So, yeah. Yeah. And Dave's, and Dave's in, in East Sussex. Sussex. Yeah. So there's an East Sussex. We've had um, interesting uh, geographical positions over the last. Um, the the last three weeks. weeks. Yeah. Definitely. And what is also interesting, actually, it's interesting that we've got a couple of guys from East Sussex. But if we are going to do road shows, like you're saying, we've had people from all over the, the country. Yeah. And um, I know we've got East and West Sussex already sort of lined up as in the locations. But so we are looking for um, venues and maybe the guys are happy to go to the Midlands and, and the north and the east of East Coast, you know, over to, I don't know, Cambridge or somewhere like that. So it's great to have you all from all over the, the UK, basically. So I guess uh, what we should be doing is uh, looking at uh, some questions. Um, if you've got any questions, as I say, put the word question in front of you and we'll try and address it. We've had some very interesting approaches to the answers over the last couple of weeks. We started in a very philosophical way yeah. about what's lawful and what uh, isn't. 
Um, and we had some very direct advice um, or suggestions, should I say, uh, last week. Um, how are we doing? Have we got anything in so far? Yeah, we have. We've got this one here. I don't know who wants to answer it. It's a question from Deleted History. Can the experts help us retrieve the money we were tricked into placing into a pension fund before the bankers pull the plug on the economy and steal it? That's quite a big one, isn't it? Mm. Any, any takers on, uh, on that from our panel? If you can put your hand up, then I can see who might be... Um, and the, the panel is just on a little monitor here. N not, nobody wants to. No, not, okay. Not really, not really takers because essentially possession is nine tenths of the law. So they've literally they've got your money. So um, get once they've got your money, getting it out of them again is the you know is, is like almost impossible. Blood from a stone type situation. Mm. Pretty much. Mm. Ah, oh, that's uh, well, that's a shame. It is a shame, and I think it's you know I'm I'm hearing a lot of things about putting stuff into trusts. I don't I think we have sort of talked briefly about trusts. So, you know, you want to secure your assets, don't you, away from your own personal being or something, or put them into the private. So I'm sure that will come come up. I mean, the next question I don't know what it is yet, so I'll just read it as it is. How do I get a trial by jury? Can I use text, texts, emails, audio and video as evidence? Do I need permission to record audio and video evidence? That's from Tina. Uh, Tina, we'll go to the panel and see if uh, anybody would like to tell you that. How do you get, a, well, the big question, how do you get a trial by jury in our system? Presumably you start at a magistrate's court, don't you? And then you, you've got to somehow, unless it's a crime, unless it's a, yeah. a natural, you know, proper crime as opposed to a, a misdemeanor yes. or, you know, yeah. a violation, I think they like to use the term, don't they? Um, anybody want to answer that? We've got um, Matt. Yeah, Matt, well, Matt, Matt's, yeah. Matt, Matt, we haven't introduced yet, actually, because Matt was Matt is actually a victim, I guess. You you know, well done, Matt, for coming on. And we've invited you on as, as, as our guest, really, because you've just gone through the system. You have fought the case and, and won. So that's, you know, it, you're perfect to answer this, really, aren't you? Well, um, my own experience, and I've, I've had several rodeos when it comes to court, I've realised, and has been explained to me, magistrates aren't really lawmen and the magistrate's court isn't even a real court it's a kangaroo court so basically if you end up in magistrates you need to say i want a crown court i want a real court i want a jury i want to be judged by my peers 12 people good and true let's go and you are far far more likely to get a good result and now, is that if yeah so, so, sorry, Matt, I was going to say, is that easy to do? Will they listen to you? Well, you, you have a right to a, a trial by jury. You have a right to it. You can say, no, I am not guilty. I want a trial. I want a trial. You can demand it. It's your right. You can mm. demand it. And then they know the cost of it, and they, they know the hassle of it. They're going to want to get rid of it. So it, it works in your favour. They try to scare you by saying... Well, you know, if it goes to a proper court, a trial, then, you know, the judge can bring down the house on you and you could end up in all sorts of things and Guantanamo Bay with an orange jumpsuit and all sorts of terrible <laughs> things will happen to you. It's nonsense. You want a trial by jury. Come on, bring it on. That's what you want. Yeah. Um, we. I mean, I remember Dean was talking about that and he went through, I mean, they held him down in prison, mm. uh, down below the court and then they waited eight hours mm. or something and then they brought him up and... Got um, him in the middle of the night and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, it wasn't very pleasant. and he kept demanding the same thing, but he just wasn't wasn't getting it. Eventually he did, yeah. but it was a long-winded process. Is, is Was that your experience? Yeah, I mean, my experience was basically... Um, they said, look, if you plead guilty at the first opportunity, then, you know, the punishment will be far, far lighter. And I said, no, I don't want it. I'm, I'm not pleading guilty. Let's go. Trial, let's go. And then they said, well, you know, we'll, we'll make a deal for you. You know, we'll, we'll, give, we'll give you this instead. And you know, you, the punishment won't be so bad. You know, so just accept that. And, you know, this can all go away. And I thought, well, it's not going to go away because I'm going to have to do probably 150 hours unpaid community service with an orange jumpsuit picking weeds out of a pond somewhere for the council no 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 let's go trial let's go <laughs> uh dave's got his hand up dave on the panel there um yeah you want to add to this well the um technical terminology is to basically go um 
you know, when they, they're trying to get you to plead, you say there is no case to answer. And if you think there is, I require an old style verbal committal to Crown Court. Oh, that's it. An old, old, style, old style verbal mm. committal. Yep. And 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 again, they do they listen to that? Do they do they have to listen to that if that's the correct terminology? Well, the, the point is, you have to make them listen. You have to con right. continue to to ask that. Don't move on from that point. Um, because they, they can't, they literally can't go any further because you're not making a plea. You're saying there's no case to answer. Right. right? So is that, so, is, would you, you would do that when they say, how do you plea? You would, that's when you would say it. Yeah, there is no, yeah. there is no case to answer. And nine times out of 10, there is no case to answer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, you, if you haven't committed a crime, right? And you haven't um, uh, breached a contract, right? Yes. They're the only two ways that they can they can bring a, a case against you. Um, the other the other way is that you're their, you're their slave and you're yes. a property slave. So if they haven't got any of those, then there is no case to answer. Now that's really interesting, isn't it? That you say it because because yeah. you're you're you believe that you have to go guilty or not guilty, and you're not told that you could say anything else. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. fascinating. If, if you say you... you're guilty or not guilty, right? You're saying uh not guilty uh, no i i agree to the uh jurisdiction of the court but i plead not guilty or right. I, um i agree to the jurisdiction of the court but i plead guilty it doesn't matter yeah. what you say you're agreeing to you're agreeing yeah no yeah, I... they've got they've got it's very clever when you say old style dave what can you elaborate on that what do you mean exactly um <sighs> This is this is what um, we use this from way back, and um, my memory of it was is a bit hazy. We use this from way back in the old free man on the land days, right? To just move it from that uh, um, that kangaroo court because it, because we knew it was a kangaroo court. Um, so I, I guess it's the it's the way it was done. It was um, a verbal committal. Let's let's go to let's take it. You know we can't deal with it in magistrates court let's go to you know the next step up step up and, and that would be crown court with a jury so so do they have the right they whoever they be have the right to keep changing the laws you know or do we stick to the original laws that were put in place because surely things change don't they else we'd all be living in in caves so laws must change as well how do they bring in new laws that are we're lawful we're not dealing with laws we're right. dealing with legislation that has no power whatsoever unless you agree to it it's like um, and I keep saying it's like the um, Tesco's employee handbook. If you don't work for Tesco's, none of those rules and regulations apply to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Unless yeah. you decide I want to follow those rules and then they apply to yeah. you. And yeah. that's that's quite fundamental, isn't it? Like, that, you know, it's legislation. I think we have to get that in our mindset. Yes. That we're not following the legislation. Because is it right that um, when when we follow the legislation, it's effectively we are sort of acting like you said with Tesco's we are employees of UK limited as it were you know the the, the corporation mm. that is the government and that jurisdiction but actually we're not we're just men and mm. women going about our business and we're nothing to do with them unless we give jurisdiction to them uh, yeah unless you confess, confess yeah, yeah. Or, or deny there's any problem yeah uh, yeah so so but I, I just I mean I just think it's worth reiterating that point it's when you say when they say how do you plead and you say there is no what what was the word you used there's no subject in this matter there is no it? case to answer there's no, no case, case to, to answer. answer yeah that that's brilliant yeah and I don't know if Mick, Mick's got his hand up there so I, yeah, don't know I wanted to add yeah I just wanted to add that if you if you look even within the system they call it a jury trial which is not the same as trial by jury um, a trial by jury wouldn't have a judge, it would have an adjudicator and a number of your peers that would be judging you accordingly. They then become the judges. So right. they've, even, they've even pretty much distorted the terminology that goes with that. Yeah, and, and we, we sort of touched on a little bit yeah. of that last time, but I think it's always important to, to repeat some of these things because there's obviously new people coming along all the time and um and and you know coca-cola still have to advertise all the time just to <laughs> that's right. remind everybody of them even though you'd think they don't so i think it's very useful to repeat yeah, and repeat so De that definitely. people get it really yeah. into their yeah. psyche
Well, and it's, um, it's very subtle, Richard, because, um, you know, jurisdiction is law by the use of language. And so paying attention to language is fundamental to how you stand your ground or, or stand on, on your perspective. Right. Absolutely. And, and, you know, there's so much, there is really so much to learn, isn't there, and take in that that's, again, it's all the time. Mm. And this is what's great about having the panel is because everybody's just can add in that extra bit. We may have heard it before, but you go, oh, yeah, that bit, I yeah. can see where yeah. that goes now. So uh, that's really good. Should we? Yeah. And I think also on the top of that, I, I mean, I learn things through experience. And I think this is the opportunity for people to actually take action themselves. You know, when they when they come and they ask the questions and they're getting the answers from the panels, it's time really to, to stand up and, and be counted by by doing the work. And there's enough information out there because, OK, the panel's great. What we're doing here yeah. is really good. But these guys are going around the, the country constantly and they've got, you know, online courses and stuff. So there is so much information to be had. So, yeah, yeah, yeah no. because there's so much information to learn, isn't, isn't there? Yeah. Another question. Did you want? Yes, yeah. please. Ooh, let's find one. Um, I did find something about Scotland. Is the law different in Scotland? I saw it somewhere. I can't find where it is, though. No, but that's it. That is a good question. Yes. Because uh, people often say when yes. I've had uh, guests on the show, they say, oh, well, that's all very well for you lot. But up in Scotland, it's a different system. It, um, yeah. Don't know if anybody knows that. Anybody want to that take that one on? He says, looking at the panel. Matt's got yeah. his... Uh, Matt oh, and then Matt. Dave. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say, um, you know, there's one fundamental thing you have to um, bear in mind at all times whenever dealing with any call is be powerful. You are powerful and you are power. Do not be intimidated. The whole thing is theatre. It's theatre. And the whole purpose of that theatre is to make you feel like you don't have power. They yeah. have the power. You are the victim. No. Be powerful. Walk in there as tall as you can with your chin in the air and say, right, let's go. And then that fear will just melt away. And then you see it for what it really is, which is theatre. It's wigs, it's gowns, it's terminology, and it's there to try to make us feel weak and to surrender ourselves and to admit guilt. That's what it's there for. Don't yeah. buy into it. Do not comply to it. Be powerful. Feel powerful. Uh, it's oh hello um it's very i mean you're quite right of course but it is quite difficult isn't it when yes. you've got everything yes. looking against it and especially if you're new to it and you're thinking oh my god look at all these people and they all appear to be against me yeah um but you're you're right you've got to um you have got to take control because if yeah. you don't you've you've lost the game haven't you because we're used to being told what to do aren't we and and it, it, it is scary it's fearful and when i saw you the other day matt i said you know you're, you're fearless and you said no i'm not because have you just explained about what, what's gone i think you should explain your story where you were last week this time last week wasn't it i think yeah i was at a nightingale crown call in uh london at the barbican i was accused of assault on police officers emergency workers times two and a fray after we were attacked by the Metropolitan Police outside South Kensington Station after a um, protest we had. We uh, were attacked by the police and I tried to extricate, tried to drag away a person from police officers who were assaulting him. I was then grabbed by the police and they basically lied and said that I had attacked the police and had punched police officers and stamped on police officers. They completely lied in their books, in their notebooks. Wow. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. Anyway, it eventually found its way into Crown Court after all sorts of messing around. They refused to drop it. But the long and the short of it was because I refused to admit guilt or any of the plea bargains, they eventually had no choice other than to throw it out. Right. And that was basically what happened. That, you know, that com compacts it down. But yeah, they lied out right outright in their notes. They completely and utterly lied. It was just just unbelievable. Unbelievable. I think um I mean even I'm still reeling at the fact that the police came along and were aiding and abetting the um the bailiffs when it, or the enforcement agents, I should say, who agent who was here, three of them, three police cars. And I, I mean, we hear about police corruption, but I suppose when you see it and it's so bleeding obvious, you just think this, you know, who do you go? Who do you call? 
Can't Ghost call Busters. Ghostbusters, can, <laughs> can I say? Maybe you can. Oh, well, maybe. I mean, maybe that's the can. trouble. It, otherwise, you you end up looking at vigilantes, and you yes. we can't have yeah. we can't have that. We need a reliable police yeah. force who are actually there by consent, yeah. but doing it honourably and and being constables as yeah. opposed to. Um, yeah. money collection people I mean I came down I was in London this week and this week and uh, just getting a late train back and there was a young lad probably in his 20s we surrounded by police I don't know what the situation was but there's probably four or five you know heavy duty policemen talk it had him sort of in a corner yeah that's just so intimidating that is so frightening it's not the old bobby is it like hello 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 what's going on here then evening, it's all. Just, evening all Jack Warner yeah <laughs> So and and also I think Matt's got another little um, invitation to go and see um, the guys in wigs, haven't you? When you dressed up as as Father Christmas, because I, I remember seeing you get get pulled yeah. over. At yeah, that I mean, I was horrified seeing Father Christmas get arrested. Or well, well it was down. interesting because well, is that what happened? They, <laughs> they arrested Father Christmas. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the boys and girls. That must have been awful. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, again, you know, that was an unlawful um, reaction from the police, and it turned out that the protest was perfectly legal and lawful. And Louise Crefield, bless her, she put on that and she was given all sorts of hassle for it. That went to court and that was thrown out. And so them coming after me was thrown out as well. But what was interesting was we have got a class action going against the Metropolitan Police for that day. And then once that had gone through, then I had a letter through from the police to say, oh, by the way, um, we uh, want you in court now for breaching Coronavirus Act. So it was like a bit of a, oh, you're going to take us to court, we're going to come after you again. But the whole thing got thrown out. I mean, it's an absolute joke, it really is. They they were just picking on people, grabbing people, harassing people. And we'd seen it, I've done 50 protests, seen it time and time and time again, that Mm. slide into totalitarianism just Mm. that quickly. Just absolutely incredible to see it actually happen. And when people say, well, you know, you go back 80 years, how did those people fall for for Nazism and how can they have not seen what was happening? Wow, we lived through it, how quickly people just clicked into that into that zone and became, you know, grasses and phoning people up and yeah, calling the police because is. absolutely yeah. incredible in the thing to live through. And I'm yeah. glad for it. Yeah, no, well, this is it. I mean, it, we, it, what we do have that they didn't have back in Nazi Germany is, of course, the... Uh, the power of getting this out on social media, yeah, which which is really good. Can I take us back to the question that you were looking? I think I found Scotland. it here. Yeah, we were talking about Scotland. I'm hiding you. Um, <laughs> does anyone know? I, th- I think this is the question. It says, does anyone know if the process in Scotland is different because our council tax bill does not have our name and address in capital letters? Mm. Um, does that, uh, Dave? Um, right. So I've. I've actually just come back from last year from doing um, a whole load of uh, talks up in Scotland. Um, it's the same system. The uh, the only thing is, that, you know, they've got different names for things like uh, instead of bailiffs, they have sheriffs and, and things like that. The, the system's the same. The legislation is slightly different. So, you, you know, to if you're sending uh, notices, then you have to adjust the legislation for Scotland. But essentially the the the, the whole system's the same. Right. Oh, okay. Um, well, that's that makes it easier then yeah, it for all our It makes it so viewers. much easier. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks very much um, mm. for that. Let's uh, let's move on to um, another question. Well, there's there's one here that's saying, are there any like-minded people from Scot uh, from Cornwall? Got Scotland on the brain here. Um, are there any social network groups? What I would suggest is is go on to the Freedom Network, which is is what I set up. It's about networking people and bringing people together. Hence, we're doing this, you know, for, yeah. in, in a, a certain category. So, if you go on to the website, thefreedomnetwork.co.uk, there's an interactive map, and then you'll find your local your local hub, and you're ho- hopefully they're still active. I know a lot of people have sort of given up standing in the park and 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 doing doing the work that does need to be done. Um, but if if there is no hub there that's local to you, then just ping an email. It will come to me, and then I'll put you on the map, and hopefully you'll get a group of people that will, um, you know, join you, and 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 you you create your own tribe and do whatever you need to do, whether it's common law, whether it's growing food, educating kids. You know, there, there's loads that needs to be done. 
Brilliant. There we go. That's um, that one, that's yeah. that one. I notice in uh, this uh, this week, this month's episode episode uh, edition. That's the word of the light. I think they they've got an article about thank goodness for stand in the park, which has saved a lot of people. Absolutely. Um, their mentality more than anything. Yeah, They've met no, friends absolutely. and, and all of that. Through. And all these kind of yeah. groups are really useful, aren't they, yeah. to get people yeah, we, together. We, need, we felt very lonely. I, I know I've met so many people that were suicidal in, in, in this, you know, and especially when a lot of us were carrying on living lives in, in the norm, not in the matrix, and we were just meeting and doing our thing. And then when people started to join us, they, you know, grown men in tears because they thought it was the end. And, and, and that's what so many people did think. We were so put in so much fear. Don't kill your granny. And yeah. That. It, was, it, was, it was horrific. And it's unbelievable that's happened. But as, as Matt said, it's um, um, a good thing. Now, Dave is, is, is indicating something here. Tony. Tony's got his hand, Tony's hand up. Oh, Tony's got his hand up. Tony. Um, I just want to reiterate or contradict and reiterate what you've both said because. Mm. Richard, you said people aren't attending stand in the park so often now. Well, I do. I, I attend it whenever I can. And that is where, basically, I learned about common law. That was down to or natural law, divine law, all right, and my divine rights. Mm. Basically, that right. was down to, basically, that was down to Dave, because Dave was local to where I am. And I went along to one of his um, talks. And he put me on the on the road. From from that, um, there was other people in the stand in the park and a local uh, cooperative group that attended the talks. A few of us attended the Guardian in three hundred police constable training, um, peace constable training. Okay, mm -hmm. which was set up by Mick. Um, Dave attended the the training that I was at, but it was run by another for um another phenomenal knowledge of um guy called chad mannion mm. okay and he has been him and dave have been so helpful all the way along but i came against some stumbling blocks and i had to do a lot of research myself so not only stand in the park but there's a, a group called sovereign project mm. um, run by run mm. by pete stone and that has helped me no end. It has improved my knowledge. It's, it's a great. And he runs workshops. And this is why I'm where I am today, because I did, I did one of the courses. I'm in the throes of taking another one now. So I'm all relatively new to this. Four years I've been into this now. Um, which is relatively new, especially for... A... Blimey, I've, uh, <laughs> I'm very, very new then, because it's only like yeah. just over a year. So, I've, you know, yeah. I've got no reason to open my mouth about anything. However, when I, when I, what we need to do, and I would suggest everybody does, does this, is find out the difference between lawful and legal. Because right? yeah. they're, they're two different worlds, okay? Law... Law is easy, okay? Law is unwritten, unspoken, and you are innocent until proven guilty by a trial by jury. Did you say innocent? I thought you said you're handsome until proven guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was just your, your magnificent accent. There. You're handsome until proven otherwise. Oh, that's a, that's a nice system. Um, Richard, I'm have to, we yes. Got, Richard, you're lucky. We can't all be handsome, you know. Well, I, I've only got one eye, so, so I don't can, really qualify. You can be handsome and innocent until proven. Yeah. Well, that's very true. Can we? Sorry to to uh, move on a bit, uh, Tony. I I just wanted to put this point across. Somebody said uh, Falcon Hoof said uh, Scotland has three verdicts. Uh, not proven is the third under a jury, but a man can acquit himself in lower courts on fake criminal complaints. Whoa. So um, that's an observation mm. rather than a question. But there are there are more yeah. questions. Um, well, what about this one? Um, OK, interesting question. Knowing the law is systematically corrupt to the core, how would we ever expect any justice? I mean... And that is, you know, that's the ultimate thing. We can play our game, as yes. it were, or try yeah. and play chess. But if they're just that corrupt, yeah. what do we do? Matt wants to say. So. Matt. Yeah, it, it's it's entirely arbitrary. It really is. I mean, how can they say that it is justice if you don't blink and they blink first and you walk away? It's an absolute joke. If you don't accept 
that offer and say, no, I want to go to trial, knowing that all it takes is one person to have a shred of doubt of your guilt, then you walk away. Um, One um, interesting case some years ago, a friend of mine was in some trouble and the police were making him offers. And I said, look, you know, don't listen to the offers. You're going to be fine, okay? They are just doing this. And he said, yeah, I know, but I'll get away with, I'll only end up with six months in prison if I admit to it. I said, look, there's no evidence, okay? Don't don't back down now. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. And he was due in court to face this trial. And the uh, night before, he was ironing his trousers <laughs> and the phone rings and it was his um, solicitor to say they've dropped the case, literally the night before. Wow. So it's arbitrary. So if he had turned yeah. around and said, yes, okay, put my hands up, then he could have gone to prison. But because yeah. he, he refused to do it, then he walked away. So it's, it's, yeah. it's lunacy. You have to take it all the way and don't back down. It's the best way. Yeah, stand your ground because it is a game of chess, really, isn't it? You know, yeah, it's, totally. it's, it's, that, that's what we're, we're, we're doing. We're playing chess in a real life situation. This is a bit of an odd question. I don't know if I can read it, but it's coming from Premier 252. When Trump said in his inauguration, um, inauguration, we are giving the power back to you. Did this apply to the UK as as we are under military control? And I think Mick should say something about that because Mick is ex, ex-military. I mean, do you like that question? <laughs> It's really interesting. Some of the uh, I spent thirty years in the military, and some of the boys that I took through into the Army Physical Training Corps, one in particular who I won't name, but he's he's the senior master at arms Army Physical Training Corps. Uh, and of course, um, when I talk to to these guys, I'm very mindful that they don't know what I do in terms of the Guardian Three Hundred, and but I know the the world quite intimately. And you'd be amazed how blind that world really is. You know, the whole mm. when somebody says that the military are controlling us, I don't get that. I don't get that on any level. Right. Some I think key members of the military are as blind as some of the public. If I also look at the way the British military ceased it to exist um after Brexit under Langley, when when, when Boris allowed Langley, Robbins and Bro- uh, Bro- Bro- Brookbank to sign us up to eight EU contracts, which became live in January 21. Um, we no longer had a sovereign force. It's very interesting that all the hardware that belongs to the British Army, they've shipped off to this great psyop that's known as the Ukraine and, and a great money laundering exercise that is. So when somebody says that the British, that the, that the army are in control of us, I, I don't agree with that on any level. Can, can I also ask you, Mick, because there's um, a lot of fear, a lot of questioning with the people that are coming in on the rubber dinghies, um, and there's not many sort of women and children that are these refugees, they're sort of men of a certain age. There, there are rumours saying, well, you know, an army's being created by, by these refugees. What's your opinion of that? Well, it takes a lot more to train someone as a soldier than just to recruit them and put them in a hotel. And in reality, if they were really assets and you wanted to to treat them as assets, you'd put them somewhere more private. And you would also train them so they're fit for purpose. Um, I think that they're, they're capable of creating a lot more hassle untrained. And I think that if, if, if somebody incentivizes them to do their bidding at the level of creating uh, an unlawful situation or anarchy, they'd be better untrained. So... Mm. I can assure you, having having done some some op stuff with Gurkhas, you would assume, because Gurkhas are a very professional force, that all of that would run quite smoothly. Never does because there's quite a, a difference in language, uh, and you would also assume that, that when you decide to to make something happen, um, that it that it's the command and control structure that it all, all goes well, and that's not the case. This this is why I think. If you look at what the governments have done by by putting in place um, almost eyes and ears with common purpose, that has been one of the tools they've used to monitor everything as finely as they have. Command and control is not easy when you're talking global initiatives. Not easy at all. No, I can imagine, actually. Mm. Mm. 
No, that Well, point. actually, what you say there is very reassuring, I think, to a lot of people, because people have been thinking that this is an army in waiting, that should we go down to martial law for whatever reason, that they'll be out there with the only one prepared to yeah. shoot the rubber bullets or, or real bullets, whatever. Uh, but, but uh, uh, I, I, And the Kalergi plan, Richard, if people look at the Kalergi mm. plan, it shows you why they are doing a, doing a number of things. But but for me, what's happening with, with, the, with, with this... Um, What's happening with, with this influx of people, it's to create identity politics and for us to go into combat and, and, and create this smoke and mirrors so it keeps everyone busy with the smoke and mirrors. If you yes. create inequality and it's public, that's naturally going to make some people fed up. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, they're sneaking in their systems that are designed to, to, to execute a level of control that, that people will find it hard to get out of in the form of CBDC and... Uh, and, and such yeah and and the Kalergi plan I mean can you say a little bit about that because I know it's about diluting you know certain cultures or, or um, people or individuals or you know countries well and, and of course I know that Dave's shaking his head um, and, 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 and I love different perspectives Dave that's what it's all about mate because mm. ultimately it's about sharing our sharing our experience and, and what we've learned and for me, what I'm seeing unfold is just that, the dilution of culture. The, um... Now, the thing is, if, if you came at this from a, from a spiritual perspective, and there's a lot of spiritual people in the movement, they really wouldn't bother whether we were mixing cultures. I mean, what difference does it make whether you're black, white, yellow or red? You know, well, so, I mean, if we're all if we're all spiritual and we're all the same indi yeah, you know, individual, matter. then you're Absolutely. quite right. I'm just slightly. I'm just. I'm. I'm gonna sort of pull it back to the lawful thing because yeah. I know that people out there will be going. Hang on a minute. We're we're drifting away, and I yeah. don't I don't want to drift it into areas that are not. But um, mm -hmm. that, what, what about this one that might bring it back a little bit? Can you make up divine rights, or is it just Bible stuff? That's from Bertie. <laughs> That's uh, yeah. So I mean, we the the Bible is often used. I mean, you you put your hand on the Bible in, in court. In court so yeah. so what was the question? Can you just make up divine rights? Yeah, or is it just yeah? Can uh, you make up that's divine uh, rights? It's, it's, I mean, it's an interesting question. Anybody on the panel want to address that at all? Uh, Dave. Tony Tony's got his hand up first. So oh sorry, T Tony. Yeah no. You you can't you can't just make up divine um divine rights we was all born we was all born equal and we was all born with those rights and you don't nobody can nobody can take those rights away from you basically what uh, you do you, other you, than you with force other than that, other than with force you're right there but you, you give those rights away by being tricked or agreeing, into their presumably. Tricks, mm. tricks and traps. Mm. 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 Yeah. That's why you need to know you under in law and law and legal is a completely two different worlds. Okay. Um, under law, we are all equal. No one is above you in law. And no one has authority over you. So you you are your own law, you are your own court, and you are your own authority. And you've got two choices. You're either a sovereign or a slave. Okay, and that, that's what it boils down to. Yeah, I was, I was just so going to come in. It, 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 I mean, that's... Take your rights I, back. Yeah, you, I, all I was going to say back. is I wish the other side would would appreciate that because they don't <laughs> seem to, you know... Yeah, sounds Because that seems to be the big problem is that the, 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 uh, um, the legal side do not seem to accept, or at least not publicly, maybe they do privately and they get that that's how it's mm. set up, but they, they certainly trump or try to trump all that with their rules and regulations and keep us into the in their jurisdiction. But yeah, um, in my own personal opinion, Richard, they are, in my own personal opinion, they are starting to realise that because there's more and more people now becoming aware of the corruption and the fraud that legislation puts upon us. Yes. And, and, um, Basically, we're, they're waking up to what's going on, and they, because more and more people are doing it, they're willing to start doing the challenges, and we need to challenge them. Dave w wants to add to that. Dave, what you what you got to understand about this system is that it's, and I say this a lot, it's like 
when you take your clothes back to a shop and you haven't got the receipt, there'll be yeah. a there'll be a guy on the desk who'll say, sorry, you can't do that. And nine out of ten people are going to turn around and go, okay, and go home. But that one person who stands there and says, get the manager out of here, yeah, the manager is going to, you know, just say, well, you know, we can't, it's store policy, we can't really do it. But eventually we'll say, you know what, just for you, just this once, we're going to let you do it. The point is, he has to. It's the law. He has to do it, right? But yeah, it makes good business sense to lie to people, right? Because nine out of ten people are going to accept the lie, right? And then when you get through to the manager, he will try and lie to you as well. But eventually he'll he'll let you, um, you know, uh, access your rights as such, right? But he'll do it in such a way that doesn't admit that uh, you were right. And, right. He, and the whole system is like that. So if you, you start challenging the system, you're going to hit the guy on the desk who will say, no, that's wrong. You can't do yeah. that. <laughs> but you have and to we all do system. that, don't we? Yeah. We're, we're all hitting the people at the desk. And it's a question of calling the manager out and getting him to slowly realise that he has got to obey the, yeah. the law. And, and then they'll yeah. say, oh, as an act of kindness or of an act of goodwill, we'll take the clothes back. And you think, oh, OK, thank you very much. Yeah. But like you say... As you if know, they, they were have... in control yes, all that, the time. That, yeah, yeah, exactly. No, it's a very go good point, very, Dave. Very good way of explaining that. Um, you... there's a... Yeah, go on, um, Matt. I, I was going to say, you also have to understand that throughout our entire lives, all the way from the very, very first day of school, we are taught to relinquish our power over to the system. And this oh, is where just. it comes from. Yeah, uh, That's It right. comes from the back why they need and must have schools, which is why, uh, you know, communities like Hope and what we're building here terrifies them so much because we're teaching kids to say, no, no, I'm going to question that. I'm not going to assume that I've done something wrong. You know, I'm going to challenge everything that you say. I'm going to question everything that you say. And that's what scares them the most. We have to get right into the root of why people are so happy to hand over their authority to someone just because they're wearing a high-vis vest they bought on Amazon for four quid. <laughs> it's an absolute... Oh, I, it's the psychology I, of it all. Yes. No, I totally agree. It, it is. And I also think, um, you know, if you look at the way the police are trained now, they used to include... A lot, a, a lot of elements of common law. If you if you go back to before we joined the EU, the um, the European the, the common market, you know, before we did that, you, you know, a constable had to be constitutionally able to carry out his duties to make decisions in his own right, as opposed to following diktats. The moment somebody follows a diktat, they're no longer a constable because they're not autonomous. So the whole essence of training has changed as well for the police. Yeah, that and, and that's a real shame, isn't it? Because, mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. you just don't know. <laughs> if you've watched an episode of Dixon of Doc Green or anything, you just would not recognise no. the, the Bobby of the past no. who seemed to be there to serve the community to the, to the police officer that seems to be serving the corporations. That's right, and they're scary. Can I, if you, can if I you, just yeah. quickly say something about the power of high vis? Yeah, please do. There's a whole bunch of us uh, trying to shut down a, uh, a vaccine centre uh, one time in Windsor, it was. And um, I went back to my car and to change. And I put on a high-vis vest, uh, the lanyard on, and uh, had my, um, my uh, body cam on there as well. And I went back to the, uh, the centre, and I'm standing away from the main group, who was sort of uh, around the entrance. And all the people who were who were coming for their vaccinations, came to me. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So I was able to, I was able to say things like, uh, oh, I, it's, we've got all these anti-vaxxers who turned up. And you know what? I've heard what they were saying. And you know what? I'm not going to have my chat. Ah, um, oh, brilliant. And well literally, yeah. I was able well to turn done. about 12 people away. Oh, that is Gallibility fantastic. Gallibility of the yeah. public again, isn't it? It's just Power incredible. Power of five is. Power of five mm, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Well, I, I mean, I, I know we haven't really got time to go into this, but I used to do entertaining and I used to be um, a, a comedy waiter was one of the gags that, that I used to do. And you used to pretend to be a waiter and you just join the rest of the team and you start to do very subtle, silly things mm -hmm. and people start to notice, not everybody notices and you get away with all sorts of murder. But I realised that if you put on... The, the black waistcoat and a bow tie, you could walk into any hotel and go almost any room mm -hmm. because you just become one of the, a moving wallpaper. Yeah. You become one of the staff. Yeah. And and you think how easy it is. I mean, we've heard of the removal men, have we not, that, that turn yeah. up at a house and people have looked at them and they've taken all the furniture out of the yeah. house, assuming that your neighbor has moved. And actually they're thieves. Well, it's, it's giving our power away as well, isn't it? Because if you see somebody in a white coat with a stethoscope, yeah. isn't it? you assume they're a doctor. We well, just <laughs> make these assumptions. Yeah, we you, don't you question do. it. The power of the uniform. It's Psychology. Yeah. <clears throat> Psychology. Yeah. Um, there was something here that was quite good. Um, so leave my rights alone. That's a song, isn't it? Leave those kids alone. It is being made easier today with so many people talking about this, which is great. And that's why Richard's show is fantastic because it, it's bringing people together. And Stephen Thompson says, Pete Stone was on with Peter Wilson on YouTube recently. We need to start collaborating. Well, this is kind of what we're doing here in, in the Lawful Remedy with the Clever Clogs. And Pete Stone, actually, and Pete Wilson are coming on in a couple of weeks with Callie Spell to bring a bit of glamour because it's all male-dominated at the moment, which is great. We, want, we love the men. Thank you for doing that. But there's not many women that I know of mm. that are stand up. There's Callie, and there's another lady that's coming on as well who wants to be anonymous, so... So, but yeah, so for the viewers, we are, that's what we're doing, isn't it? We're getting information out. You guys are coming, spreading the word in your very individual way, which is great. Because I thought when we were going to do this, it would be a bit like herding kittens, you know, because everybody <laughs> has got their own way of doing it, which is, is fantastic because you're all autonomous and you've got different opinions, but we're, we're sharing the knowledge and you're doing brilliant jobs. Absolutely. Um, it's good can, to can see I Stan. Say something about that, Karen. You know, yeah, of one course. of the things that we were very aware of very quickly with the Guardian 300, if you stay centralised, a lot of people call for this centralisation. And actually, if you look at what Dave's doing and you look at what all these other guys are doing, what you're doing is you're creating a thousand different fronts, which is right. much more difficult to fight than one focused front. Now, the only time you need momentum is when you've got a strategy that's going to work. And of course, I think as trial by jury starts to take off, which it will do, um, that's when you need the momentum and, and mm. uh, to, to support the strategy. So centralization for me is often a weakness. If you look at the French resistance, they didn't use a central force. Three people knew three people, but never met anyone else. So they could never be discovered. And, and the most powerful meth method of war fighting exist that exists is guerrilla warfare. Mm. And I suppose that's, that um, is quite true in the dark forces that are doing their thing. You know, people, don't, they're on, on the need to know basis because yeah. those people who are spraying the skies are all told, well, it's very important for the, the planet. And they go, oh, yeah, no, OK. But they, they yeah. obviously don't know the bigger story and you're not going to tell them no. the whole lot. So you can see how it works for them. And, and I think the art of war is, I, I've got the book, I've not read it, but the art of war, I'm told, is a very good book. Do you, do you know it is illegal now to have a book and not actually read it? No. Oh, we'll have to burn them all. <laughs> you know, we've, all we've, we've all got books and it's like, <laughs> oh yes, I've got that book. It's so <laughs> not read it. But I think it's good. I'm sure some of you guys have read it. Have you not read the art of war? I've uh -uh. read bits of it. There, Dave, is, <laughs> Dave is nodding. Dave is nodding. Yeah. Well, I'm told it's a very good book because of the strategy behind it, like you say, because it's yeah. not one battle, is it? You know, it's lots of little battles all coming together, mm. autonomous groups. Yeah. Um, I just want to recognise that uh, Stan McDonald is out there. Hello, Stan. He's been on the show, disappeared for a long time. Yes. He had a few um, personal things to deal with. Um, and he says, in Canada, the courts do not follow the statutes and short of paying them more to appeal at, at it, how do we hold the courts and all the people accountable? Um, so I think he's just saying that there's a lot of corruption there and you have to, I think that's what he's saying. Mm. Um, but he's coming back on the show. Um, a lot of people were very... Uh, yeah, last week they were asking about him, yeah, weren't they? Yeah, Stan which McDonald. Is, so um, he's yeah. the guy who on the show said basically Canada doesn't exist legally. The, oh, okay. le the legal, legal. Uh, thing, yeah. Well, I mean, what they're going through, the Canadians, oof, what they have gone through um, with their leader. So that's that. Yeah. Um, any more questions? Yeah, this you could even answer this one now, Richard, because oh, this really? is our third week. So, Richard, 
Can this is from RS Uh-oh. question? Can bailiffs enter your home with a liability order without your permission? Of course they can. They can just knock it down. They come <laughs> make in, a cup and of tea. Make, yeah, put the telly on. <laughs> um, no, of course not. The swines. Best thing to do is not answer the door. Really. Oh. That would be it. But um, oh, hang on. Any other comments There's, on that, guys? We've got the, yeah, the, the team. Panel. The team. <laughs> Dave. Yeah. Um, well, there was a, the recent case. I think you covered it, Richard, at one point. Um, Leighton versus Bristow and Stu- Suter, yes. which uh, basically said that um, unless you have a written liability order to back up um, back up what you're doing, you know, you've got no basis to which, um, upon which to stand. So um, to prevent them from from even coming to your house uh, is you uh, essentially just send them a send them a um, um, you know a, a notice. And uh, quoting that, and uh, they 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 have to uh, abide by it. Because whether they will or not is, uh, is yeah. uh, you know, they may just yeah. try and because they seem to go after the low hanging fruit, the most vulnerable people in society. And so because of that, um, you know, if you're um, an elderly person who's unlikely to know the law, yeah, uh, and they'll just come and intimidate and take a take a chance, really. And I think they like to share that because again, that's fear mongering, isn't it? It's yeah. like you know, if you misbehave, this is what's going to happen to you. But the um, lady that was um, evicted, I'm sure we all know the story. The the lady with um, in in Kent was it Maidstone that had um, the, the cancer. Oh yeah. So well, she's back. She's back in. So there was a bunch of people that mm. that assisted to to put her back in her home. And I didn't realise this, but apparently when they do evict you, then they put security guards in the home with dogs. You know. What, so so you don't go back in. Yeah. So or, or to protect to protect the property. But mm. yeah, she, from, she, she, yeah, from previous owners. From previous, like yeah. you know, people yeah. dying of cancer. It's and like... she fully owned her her house, which is amazing. You know, she owned uh, anyway. Mm. Along with the along with the liability order written liability order they they also need an ovation agreement as well a what agreement an ovation agreement a novation a novation agreement yeah all oh, right what, what what's, what's that ovation? i've not heard that's, of that yeah, that's term. a new one I've, I've never seen one as yet i'm good <laughs> it looks like i might have to um demand one very soon with uh enforcement officers are you in a perilous oh are you yeah, but oh. this is um, this is against a motoring offence or an alleged motoring offence, mm. which they they've got no they've got no evidence whatsoever. They've certainly not looked at the um, policy officer's video because they've not even asked me for my side part of the story, and they've just put a charge on me. But um, again, they've all their, all their documentation has been sent to me. With the, my name spelt wrong, so it's not. Um, it's not even you. And, it, and it's un, it's unlawful for me to open somebody else's mail. It's a crime. It can be considered yeah. wrong if I open somebody else's mail. Mm, so well, that's a good point. So you don't that's... you don't um you, you don't just do nothing about it. You can put a sticker on the envelope, addressy not recognised, return to ten. And there's lots of different things issues with lawful mail, et cetera, et cetera. But yeah. um, if you if you haven't received any documentation or anything, how can you how can you pay a fine? How can you do this? And the other thing is when they send this, when they send these um fines and forfeitures, put them on you and send them to you, none of it, none of it is ever signed. Or there's no name and there's no signature on the document. Which basically is junk mail. Yeah, because it could be any. I mean, if no one's got liability for sending you a letter, you don't know who it's from. You don't know if it's legit or not. Yeah, you can't. And what the can reason, you do? The they do that, Richard, is because none of them want to be held liable. No, I'm sure they don't. And and the yeah. more times that we can put people personally liable, yeah, um, for these offences or for this for the claims that they're making, so that if it goes pear shaped from their point of view, they all pay out. That would be uh, ideal. Again, that's that's knowing that the legal system is all on commerce. It's all about commerce. It's yeah. They're all mm-hmm. corporate. They're all corporate corporations, corporate entities, money Someone making is, businesses. T- a Tina is just a piece of paper. So how can yeah. a piece of paper put a, you know put a, a charge on you? Uh, t- Tina Henschel's asking a question here. Is a notice the best way to address our own problems lawfully? 
for example, evicting a tenant from land, uh, from land, or following international sabotage to properly to property by tenant, or following in, intentional. In not international, I beg your <laughs> pardon. That's, that's, I've is, only is got it, one eye. Is it the best way to address our own problems lawfully, e.g. evicting a tenant from land or following intentional sabotage to property by a tenant? There, you said that so much better than well, I only did. Only because you said it first, so it was yeah. easier for me, wasn't it? <laughs> uh, who would like to answer that? Tony? So if, the, if there's a contract and they've breached the contract, then you can do it lawfully for, through breach of contract. Okay, because you know, basically, a, a, a contract would be between the land, the landowner, and who, who's ever on it. If they've gone on your land unlawfully, then you have every right to kick them off anyway, to get rid of them. Um, so, it, it, notices are a, a good form to use. Due process, three, three notices, notices, three letters. You're entitled to due process yourselves, which they don't they don't give you. But use it on them because as lawful as lawful men and women, we act honourably and truthfully. Mm. So yes, I would say, and I'm I'm using notices against the DVLA now um, to to deregister a conveyance. I've they didn't provide me with the documents and the information that I re I requested or demanded. In the first notice, they didn't do it in the second notice. They just sent me letters stating what my um, what I'm supposed to do under the Road Traffic Act. And again, it's knowing what an act is. An act is an act of law. It's not law. Um, but my first notice was sent on the 21st of October. Last week, I had a letter from the DVLA in reply to my first notice. Well, I gave him 28 days to reply to my first notice. So there's obviously something going on. Not, I think more and more people are getting involved with them. Mm. So um, Stan McDonald asks, a letter can be ignored, um, a, noticed not, a notice not so much. So what's the difference then? How do we, just for the people that don't quite get it, how do you, um, what's the difference between your notice and a letter? What makes the one different from the other is that dave dave Mm. well with a notice you're notifying them of a process that's started um you know and they've got obligations to to um address it or not but if they don't address it there are consequences to that as well Uh, a letter there's no obligation to do anything it's just it's just a letter they don't have to reply don't have to do anything but if you're saying um yeah, I've I've come up. You know, it's uh, this this thing has come to my attention, right? Um, you know, you're 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 demanding money from me. Um, I'd like to see the basis of that demand. Uh, you've got you've got thirty days. We've got seven days to provide me with evidence of, uh, you know, that you you can demand money from me. Uh, if you fail to, well, these are the consequences. So now they've been notified. They're under a, a duty. To, to respond right now that's very clear thank you very much yeah um, that is clear isn't and, it? and yeah. you put do you put notice on on the top of the letter just so that you know it makes it clear or does it in big bold letters <laughs> in big bold letters yes <laughs> and and if they so it demands action doesn't it basically and if they don't reply or respond or, or or do something then what well it you, it uh, comes down to whatever you you put as the consequences it's like right if you're dealing the with council tax you know um, if you fail to respond, it will be deemed to mean that there is no obligation for me to pay council tax. Right. Yeah. Easy peasy, isn't it? When you explain it like that. Yeah, like it. I, I've upset somebody here because. Oh dear. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Zen says it shouldn't be about men or women. It's about expertise, which I totally agree. I totally agree. It's about expertise, but it's lovely that women are are stepping up. But then somebody said most women, most of us, Rowena. Most of us women are at home schooling and trying to stay out of the limelight. So sorry if I upset any men or women out there. It is about expertise, but it is just nice to have some other women on board. So, I was, I was yeah. thinking it's better to be uh, in the limelight rather than under yes. the LED lights because well, LED well, lights are not, not as good, good. whereas limelight, gonna, no. the, the original old limelight was no. probably a bit better. Arc lights. I was going to say, yeah. 
I, I was going to say, in terms of limelight, once again, they try to make us fearful of being recognised to have a face. No, no, you, you've got a face. You were born with a face and with a name. Use it. Don't be scared. Don't be fearful. Oh, my God, I, I have to hide underneath the parapet. No, you can. You know, jump over the parapet and stand there and say, look, you know, I am a sovereign human being. Mm. I know my rights. I'm standing in my light and in my truth. Let's go. And once again, the fear will go. You know, they want us to be curtailed and to be fearful and to be crouching down. No, stand up to your full height. Stand in your truth. That's where your power is. You are, you are powerful. You are a powerful human being. Feel and that's it. whether you're a man or a woman or if you identify as anything, really. It doesn't it? matter. So, it doesn't matter. No, exactly, exactly. Yeah. It's no, easy to say power. that. It's easy to say that if you haven't never, you know, if, you, if you've done it already. But if you've never taken a, a stand against anything, mm. right, that first hurdle is the, is the big one. Right? Yes. Massive. I, I, but once massive. you've done it, once you've yeah. done it, the fear goes. Right? Yeah. But, yes. you know, um, it's just a, a question of realising that this is a game. This is yeah. a game. No, none of this stuff out here is important. What's really important is your relationships with people, they're real people, right? All this, all, all this paperwork, all this government dictates, all this, none of it's important, right? Play it as a game and, uh, and enjoy playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I think that's why the, what we're doing here, Richard and I and you guys coming on the panel, is about hopefully supporting people to stand up in, in their sovereignty and stand up and be counted. And, you know, you don't have to be alone in this because we are coming together, we are collaborating. That's really important um, from all over the country. And, and hopefully, you know, more and more people will come watch the shows or go to the, the workshops and the stuff that all you guys are doing around the country and learn more and find your friends standing in the park or going through the Freedom Network, find your tribe and, and do the work because it's time, you know, it's time. It's not about I mean, sovereignty though. It's not yeah. about sovereignty. It's, this is exactly the school bully. This is still the school bully, yeah? Right. It's just, it's just that bullies change his clothes and, was, you know, wearing a uniform yeah. has got, you know, papers and what. No, it's a, it's a school bully and we've got to learn to stand up to it. Um, it's an interesting, an in, sorry, an interesting comment here from uh, Stanley Milgram, who says, "Well, once you've lost your foe, once you've lost your home, you've got nothing else to lose." And I think people do worry um, about engaging in this, especially if they're not fully prepared. Yeah. And you have really got to to know your stuff because it is, I think, very easy to watch something like this and think, "Oh." You know, I've just listened yeah. to allegedly Dave or to Mick or whoever and and just think, oh, right, OK, that's all I do. And then when that hasn't quite gone the way that you expect it to go, oh, God, what do I do? And then they're sort of weak and vulnerable and um, and falling into that trap. Would would you guys agree or? I think Dave? it's really interesting what Dave says in so much that um, one of the things that really stuck out to me was when we took people out of uh, that the of quarantine in, in the Holiday Inn with myself and Suk, mm. um, we actually went in and, and, and showed them a peace constable card and they clearly misinterpreted that and sent us over to the VIP parking area so we could get people out. But the, the, but the essence of this is there's no point just complaining because complaints mean nothing. What we found out very quickly was that you actually have to take the fight back to them in the form of criminal complaints and anything that holds them to task individually. Because if you just complain, it's it, you might as well, you know, it's a little bit like saying, I don't, I don't consent. Uh, it's great, but there's no teeth with that. Yeah, it's about being being the victim as well, isn't it? I think it's, you know, we can't all, we are all victims in this, but we need to stand up and not be bullied anymore. Very, very important. Can I just, and, 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 sorry, just somebody... sorry um, Karen. No, go on. Can I just read what what, on, on what um, Mick has just said? Because what we've we've reported some crimes. Okay, there's four of us locally who reported some crimes, and they've closed the case. We've we've proved that they we have done some research. The group of us have done research um, with the help of 
um, Chris Coverdale. Um, and I'll, I'll say his name because he won't mind at all. Hmm. The crimes were blatantly there. We put down what crimes they committed. We put a list of people down who committed them. They didn't even investigate the case. Okay, so I put a complaint in. I went through the complaints. First of all, I wrote to the, and this was with East Sussex Police. I wrote to the Sussex Police Chief, okay, Joe Shiner. Uh, sorry, the Sussex Police Crimes Commissioner, Police and Crime Commissioner, uh, Katie Bourne. I got a letter, I gave her 28 days to, know, um, to reply. I got a letter back seven days later from her legal department saying she doesn't deal with complaints, right? Yet she is the police and crime commissioner. She doesn't deal with complaints. So I had to go through to the Sussex Police Professional um, Standards Department. So I went through them. They stated that I had to go through to the government, but I didn't because I'd reported crimes. And I've stated to them that if it's not their job to investigate crimes, whose job is it? I'm still waiting for a reply from to that one. The other thing is they also push back to the Sussex Police and Crimes Commissioner. Hmm. So I've written to her again. Okay. The thing is, don't give up. Don't give up. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to stop. You need to be strong and you need to. We have the power. You have the power. Mm. Every individual has the power. You need to keep going at them. It's it's getting your conscious, your, your mindset right, and it's getting your conscious. Now, conscious conscience conscience is the most sacred of property, and that's written in this in the uh, former property law. I think it was seventeen ninety two, papers six uh, two sixty six to two sixty eight. So your conscience. Is amazing. It's power. Mm. But it goes back to like the, the natural law, isn't it? Because we are divine beings, and I think yeah. that's what we need to remember and, and sort of get out of the head and, and all this like the matrix stuff. And like you say, detach yourself, not be attached to all the material things that we are attached to, which is really hard because that's the world in which we live. But once you detach yourself from all that, then then you realise there's much more to us than just this, this vehicle that carries our spirit, our soul, and that's what it's about. It's, it's, you know, going back to really our first week on the panel, it was quite philosophical and a spiritual chat, wasn't it? Last week it's more practical things. And they will continue to knock you down as mm. much as they can do. Yes. And you've got to be mm. strong and get back up and fight, okay? Yeah. Peacefully, if you fight fight. peacefully. Oh, sorry. until you need to draw your sword. Right. OK, um, just moving back to some some of the questions now. Um, this is a, a, a slightly different question, if I can ask this one. This is from Soundman, who says, when claiming your merchant title deed to your all caps surname, which HM, which HMRC SIC, I don't know what that stands mm. for, does one use? What is an SIC? I've seen that in capital letters, SIC. Sick, yeah. Sick. It it's makes you sick. sick. Yeah. Oh, it's a sick code, is it? What is, what is, is, yeah, what is a sick code? It's, um, it's don't tell me to do industry. Is it standard industry code? It's a, it's what business you're in. If you, if you uh, start a business, you've got to choose uh, a sick code for your business. Oh, I um, see. So, but I, yeah. I have no idea what he's talking about. And if it's uh, to do with like this idea of claiming your, your name or whatever, um, it's it's probably a waste of time to be honest right okay because because that kind of moves on to this question by um time goes by 12 isn't it better to change our state as a sovereign rather than keep rebutting it so again talking about names i guess is is it better if i know i get emails from a sovereign day sovereign pete sovereign sandra is is that one way just to change our name into something sovereign no, the best way is to act like a sovereign. <laughs> yeah, don't. It, it, there is no way of 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 de, you know declaring it or having it recognised or anything. You right. just have not to start acting like it. <laughs> yeah. So it's not it's not like a title you can no. put on you. I am no. sovereign. No. I'm a no. member of the sovereign no. club. I've got my uh, yeah. little certificate. There it is. Look, you can't. You can't you do... Yeah. You can't do the work. That, that does help it if it helps you to feel like you are right. You know, oh, okay. they're great, yeah. but the the key is acting like it. Yeah, don't be begging them for anything. 
Yeah, don't be, don't be sort of kowtowing to them. The police are your servants. The government are your servants. Yeah, you know when you when you sort of um, start asking them for things, then you give your power away to them. Yes, I think that's a very powerful message, Absolutely. actually. And I so, do try to yeah. say that many, many times in my yeah. show, as unqualified as I am. But, but um, I do think that that is, you know, we do know that they are our servants. Yeah. But we forget, yeah. you know, because they, they don't act like our servants. I mean, no, so they, don't. they act as sovereign mm. and, and, and kings and, yeah. and treat us as if we are subservient. But actually, and then we're, we're paying their bloody wages. Exactly, exactly. They're so public servants. Again. Psychology. Yeah, psychology. Again, yeah. Totally. Again, I'll just say, Dave, I wouldn't act as sovereign. I'd be sovereign. I'd be. No. Sovereign. That's what I mean. Yeah, he means that. Yeah. Again, he means that. He means that. Yeah. Don't argue. Don't argue. Oh, this. Again, you up in the panel, ladies. If you're playing, if you're acting, well, he's you're playing a game. Yeah. He's going to draw his sword earlier. I think one of you said before you draw your sword. Yes. <laughs> yeah. S I C code. Sorry, it does mean um, the standard identification code and tells what business you do. So point to Dave. Point yeah, to Dave. exactly. Um, just, just to go back to that point again, um, regards to dealing with the police, they will think that they have the right to speak to you badly. And they've been told to do that to immediately put them in the ascendancy within that relationship as soon as they meet you or want to talk to you quite often. Well, mm. you just need to stand there and don't move and say, excuse me, I am a taxpayer. You are a civil servant. I do not appreciate how you're speaking to me. Behave yourself. Now, what would you like to say? And you immediately flip it upside down again. Then you are in the ascendancy. And then you can have a conversation. But I always remember that, you know, they work for you. <laughs> I don't know if you know, but the police actually have rules of engagement that they're trained in. And they have something four called four E's. Engage, explain, encourage, and the last element should be enforce. So, so equally, when you know a little thing or two about the way they should behave, it's sometimes useful to let them know that you know that because then they know they're not talking to someone that's ignorant. Uh, right. As is the same with the conflict resolution model. You know, if you understand a little bit about the conflict resolution model, you can then quote the escalation and who's escalating it. And of course, sometimes that's going to work, but of course, sometimes it's not because you do get some people that are happy to break the law because they're acting as agents and they've got cop cover. So it's choosing your fight, I think. They've got what cover, did you say? They might, they might have top cover. So, that, so for instance, if, if, the, if, if they have a brief before they go out on the ground, they're no longer constables because they are following orders. A constable can't follow orders. They're supposed to be autonomous. So, oh, right. so, so understanding uh, that um, allows you to, in any, in any situation, you should be making an appraisal of how effective is what I'm going to do? How effective is that going to be? Um, and that should be in your own assessment of what goes on. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. Dave? Uh, I was going to mention earlier on when we, we sort of uh, touched on it, that... Um, when dealing with the police, right, well, um, as, as Mick said, the first, the first thing is they have to engage with you. And uh, there's a bit of um, case law that uh, is useful to know. It's um, Rice versus Connolly, 1966, right, which, which uh, was stated that um, while there may be a moral duty to speak to police, there is no legal one. So there is a, a video um, um, on YouTube somewhere of me um, when, when I had four cops try and uh, try, try and deal with me, try and pull me away, and uh, they came up and for, and all I said to them was Rice versus Connolly, 1966. Every time they opened their mouth to try and talk to me, Rice versus Connolly, 1966, and uh, that's all I said. I said it about 30 times, and eventually they just wandered away because and they knew they that. knew exactly what you were wow. talking about. It, does, it doesn't matter if they knew or not, right? right. No. You've got no duty to talk to them unless you've committed a crime. They've got no power over you. You've got no duty to talk to them. Um, I think I've watched a, a, a couple of Americans that were standing there um, and uh, the police came up to talk to them and they just started talking about cheeseburgers. <laughs> and the, cops <laughs> the, the cops couldn't get a word in their, their conversation and they just wandered away. Gosh. 
That sounds very. And yet, uh, you hear that um, you know you shouldn't say start. You shouldn't stay silent. I thought you should. You well, right you, you know, if you're silent. silent by being silent, you're being complicit. Oh, I didn't know about that one. No, no. There's, there's. If in the face of an offer, if somebody makes you an offer and you stay silent, then yes. you can be deemed to have accept that accepted that offer. But right. if they're trying to engage with you, as uh, Mick said, the first one is engage. They're trying yes. to engage you. If you don't allow them to engage, you, you know, they, they can't do anything. They can't they can't go to the next E. Right. Oh, OK. Yeah. Oh, I see. That's that, I mean, that mm. is interesting. So as you say, treat it as a game. Once mm. you know that there are these rules, then it makes yeah. it, fun. It, it. Yeah, it does make it fun. Sort of fun. Sort kind of. If you've got your you've got mates a... around you that know that can support you. I think that's the thing. It's having the support. Absolutely. It? If you're feeling awful yeah. and, and you yeah, just yeah. want to sit on the loo and or throw yeah. up or you, you're just <laughs> so it's tired. Not or it's not so that's fun. That's where the sitcom. It? Somebody says SIC. Yeah. Poorly. Yeah. Uh, what, what about this question, Richard? RS, I think we've seen that one before. Mm. Um, can HMRC stroke council <clears throat> put a charge on your house stroke deed and how can it be removed if they do? That's a good question. Mm. Um, Any offers? Oh. Dave. Okay, well, um, when, once you get to that stage, it gets difficult because what they're, they're doing is building a house of cards <laughs> right? and they're trying to make that house... You know, look look very solid, right? And and if you keep if you keep allowing them, if you keep uh, agreeing with them and consenting with them, right? It's essentially they're like putting super glue on the on the edges of the card. Um, so the the key is to not let them um, progress that far. So and ha and so uh, how I mean you that you know that sounds very mm -hmm. easy, but how do you stop them from progressing that far by by not acquiescing or just continually asking questions? Well, you know, there's a there's a process you can go you can go through. Um, essentially, you 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 end up asking them questions that they can't they literally can't answer, but they should be able to answer in all good um, in all good faith. Right. Um, and then when they you know, as you said, uh, three notices, you give them plenty of opportunity to provide you with the with the with the evidence you're asking for. And when they fail to, now you've got a court case against them. Yeah, a, a completed court case uh, where you've won <laughs> because um, court doesn't have to happen in a building, right? With mm -hmm. your paperwork back and forth, that is a court case. And w once they fail to provide any evidence, they've lost. Um, it's, it's summary judgment. Um, so if they try and go any further with it, then you can, you can block them at every step. <clears throat> All oh, right. Oh, okay. That no. That's. I mean, that you, you talk so much sense, Dave, uh, mm. and you put it over so very clearly, which is which is interesting. Um, so that three notices, you're asking them questions. So questions like um, to the HMRC about, say, your inland revenue tax. I, I, you know, how can I pay the tax if I'm aiding a betting terrorism and the government is 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 doing it. And, and sending arms to wherever. Um, I, I, and can, can I also add, Richard? That yes, please do. If you look at Chris Coverdale's strategy, it's pretty pretty clever because you're not actually refusing to pay it. Mm. Right. You're creating a revocable trust and the money goes into that trust. And what you're saying is if you meet these certain conditions of of this trust, then you'll become the, the beneficiary of that, of that money, of, of that trust fund. Hmm. And if they if they can't answer your questions, which are all uh, related to where does my money go, we know exactly where it goes, then then therefore, as part of your documentation, you state where that money goes. So so you're not actually refusing to pay it. And 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 what I love about Dave's approach is is that you stop it before it gets to that point. And there are actually some great letters out there that do just that. Brilliant. Yeah, and just the last thing on HMRC, if um, if you get into a, a, um, a spot of bother with them, right, and you've uh, you know the, the the last resort is to actually pay them. You you pay them with a promissory note. Right? And Which, when you say a promissory note, uh, a promissory note, you you actually type up um, a note say saying I promise to pay the bearer the sum of. Uh, and you get it witnessed, you know, you can get three people to, to witness that you signed it um, and send it to them um, with, a, with a bit of a cover note that says, 
um, you know, that this is a promise we know. And it's, um, you know, um, Lord Denning basically um, said that uh, in, in a court case, which I've forgotten straight off my head, um, he said, we've repeatedly said in this court, in this court, that a promise we know should be treated as cash. Right. So um, you send them a promise, you know, now the situation changes from have you paid the tax to <clears throat> is this a valid form of money? Now they've got to prove that uh, you haven't paid them. So, you know, you've, you've got you've actually shifted the uh, the mm. balance away from. Can, can you do that with all your bills and just type up a promise yeah. you know there we go mate well the, that's what a 10 pound note is isn't it or 20 well, pound note I, I, I absolutely yes. and it's so a matter of faith that you take it and go yeah. okay um <laughs> but where would somebody go to redeem it though it's it's mm. not it's not a solution for everything um you know you you know when you're talking about things like utility bills it's like a repeating thing or council tax is a repeating thing um the best you know the best thing to do is actually um, refute the fact that you need to pay them in the first place, mm. right? Um, yeah. Rather than you know, it's it's a kind of it's a kind of not coward's way out, but it's a kind of um, you know last resort if you if you you don't want to you don't want to fight anymore that type of thing. But, but no, yeah, um, the best way That's is great, to actually great, isn't it? is to actually um, you know I don't mm. want to pay. I'm not paying you anything, not even a bloody promissory note. Mm. Daryl H says oh, that uh, Lord Denning said that P promissory notes are to be treated as cash. Yes, that's, uh, that's what, what I said. said. So, well, yeah, no, you did. Yeah, yeah. Someone, Somebody's someone's just commented. Someone's Somebody's agreeing with you, Dave. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're, you're we're right. Not, it's not. You're not in question. <laughs> can can um, I was, when I was talking to Tony, was it this morning, Tony, or last night? I can't remember. We were talking about affidavits, and and Stephen Coleman here has said, can they discuss an affidavit? So can you tell us a little bit about that and how that can be used in our favour? Well, Dave Anybody? can probably tell you more about affidavits than I can. The, the affidavit is a statement of truth. It's a very powerful document, um, probably one of the most powerful documents you can have. And if you breach, if you, 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 you write a statement of truth, and I'm just in the process of um, finding out the best way to write one to the CEO of the DVLA. Um, so I'm, I'm having to research it myself and I'm doing some research myself. I've had um, some assistance this morning from a colleague of mine um, who subscribes to, I think it's LBC News or something like that with a guy called Chris Brooks and they are discussing different types of affidavit and different types of lien to use against all the different types of so-called um, So how, how would you use an affidavit? It's a, it's a statement of truth. Yep. So what, 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 when you say a statement of truth, do you mean, you know, I'm, I'm, I, Richard Vobes. I'm Richard Vobes. I live at wherever, 32 Acacia Avenue in case you're passing. Do pop in for a cup of tea. Um, that sort of thing. <laughs> Uh, I, and I'm what well, I'm a living man. I I live on my own, and the, you know the, I have a cat, yeah. and I've got any money, so leave me alone, you bastard. That sort of thing. And then how would you, whatever your affidavit is, that's the statement. How would you use that against um, your utility bills or the HMRC or any of that? Well, I'll let Dave answer this because he probably knows more about it than I do. But just to say that my affidavit of status took me 11, 11 months to complete. Blimey. Does your tr truth change around a bit? It, 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 it basically it takes me out. It takes me out of the an affidavit of status takes you out of their jurisdiction and puts you takes you out of the maritime uh, ad, maritime law and puts you onto law of the land. You know, takes you off right. the law, of the, puts you onto law of the land. Um, but yeah, go over to Dave because Dave is far more knowledgeable. Dave, about this you've been law. you've been challenged. <laughs> right. That's okay. Well, a, a statement, um, a, a affidavit of truth, is is you um, stating under penalty of perjury, which I, I thought was, um, uh, I think, the, I thought the sentence was twenty five years, but somebody said it was seven years. But under penalty of perjury, you're you're swearing that what you're saying is the truth, right. and you you send it out to whoever it is, you know, whether it's a council and or, or whoever. And they have, let's say, 40 days to rebut point by point 
every one of those uh, you know your statements and um, if they fail to rebut any of those statements then they become the truth in law so um, that's that's the maxim an unrebutted affidavit stands as truth in law so it is very powerful because mm. if you send them an affidavit and they can't rebut any of it then mm. now that is the absolute truth nobody can argue with it uh, what um, if they don't know the answers mm. i mean uh, i mean i'm i'm still just trying to sort of work out what what a statement but if you're dealing with a council they ought to know the answers <laughs> You but know. they might, I mean, if you said in your statement, I mean, if you're trying to be a bit clever and you're trying to catch them out and, and you say, you know, I went on holiday to Lanzarote in 1962, which actually is a Did year you? before. No, I didn't because yeah, okay. I wasn't born. But <laughs> okay. um, it's, I, I mean, when you say the statement, I mean, it's obviously got to relate to the subject that you're talking about, presumably. You can't, you're yes. not just saying, yeah, no, I, I no, know I'm being a bit, it's... I'm being a bit facetious only because some people might mm. go, oh, I'll put these trick questions in, and if they can't rebut it, then I win, sort of thing. I'm, I, I don't mean to be... It's not about trick questions. Again, it's about the truth. Because, yes. again, if you're, if, you're, um, if you're doing this under penalty of perjury, if you lie in an affidavit, you yes. go to jail. <laughs> that, yes, that's... no, I've, I'm, I'm, I wasn't kind of saying that. I was just saying that you could put all sorts of truths, which would be true, but they may not know that they're true and wouldn't be able to answer them. That's well, what I'm obviously, if you're dealing with the council over council tax, yes. right, all the all the statements of truth have to relate to that, and um, you know they have to um, they have to be things, and they, there'll be things that uh, if they're true, then it, it challenges your liability to to council tax. Right? right, it'll be things that they they don't want to admit, but they should be able they should give it to you. Um, you know, in good faith, you know. How would you know if it's true? I mean, let's say mm. you were saying, I, you know, it's true that there is no liability order because it's it's pronounced, and I'm not at the hearing, so I can't hear it being pronounced. You could say that, but then they may come back and say, actually, that's not right, and you may have got it wrong, and then you go to prison. Well, mm. That's mm. why you've got to get your facts right before right. you do it. It's a serious oh, thing. Okay. Right. You you did a show just recently about um, about uh, the Ministry of Justice telling the courts uh, yes. that they had to you know that they, they can't do these uh, paper liability orders anymore. Right? Yes. But they are still saying, pretending that they've got a paper or liability order. Right? Yes. So your statement of truth can say it is my understanding that uh, the uh, the form for creating a paper liability order was withdrawn in two thousand and three. Right. Right. that's one of your your statements right now they've got to rebut it and say no no we still have the form <laughs> right so okay one of you will be lying if and, and you so you've yeah. got to be careful how you write that because you said my understanding is which is of course something that nobody could prove your, what your understanding is but well if no you're, you're, saying, it's you're a... laying that understanding out you're saying um you know this is this is what i um i i believe to be true right and uh and you know you've got the evidence. You should have the evidence to back it up. Yeah, <laughs> right. So... Here is the freedom of information from Sion Jones. I think her name was or Sean Jones, who said we stopped doing that in two thousand and three. Da 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 da. And so that would be that would make up yeah, your and the, then the, they, the uh, truth. and wait, the they can't really get out of that because a that is true, and they've got proof. Uh, unless of course that freedom of information is wrong. Well, no, that's See... the fact is freedom of information. They have to be truthful honest correct about what they give right. back to the public and if they lie that's that's a that's a serious thing as well if they lie on freedom of information request then that's uh, that's just a serious so, so yeah I so, well t, t crooks here and i'm sure he answered asked the question last week he said is anyone obliged to rebut an affidavit if it isn't part of legal proceedings so can it be rebutted well that's what do you mean? It, can it be rebutted? Because that's, well, that's the a point. question. It has to be rebutted. It has, it to, has be rebutted to be to, for them to for them to nullify an affidavit. It has to be rebutted. If they fail to, then then whatever whatever terms and conditions you put on after it, then they apply it. It becomes a truth. Your side becomes a truth, um, and now that's that's a, a powerful um, weapon that you have against them. Right.
I, I, I'm getting it yeah, now. Yeah, that's right. Oh. Very good. That's it just a, takes, it yeah, takes a little bit of time to get, to get into <clears throat> the old Vogue's <clears throat> brain. But Dave, thank you for that and yeah, for nice. tolerating really my good. idiotic <laughs> questions. Can I just ask Dave a question, Dave, about affidavits? Do you have to get them notarized? Yes, you do. Okay. Um, it, is, it is possible. You can get it notarized by three, um, three people. Um, you know, three... Um, Yes, three people that, that will sign to say that you signed it, but it's best to get it notarized. Um, one of one of the things a notary can do um, is, and and I'm still I'm still waiting for somebody to confirm this to me, but you can um, get the respondent to the affidavit to respond back to the notary, and when they fail to respond in in forty days, then the notary will issue a certificate of um, of uh, non-response, I think it is, something like that. And now that um, goes in your pack to say that, you know, officially they did not respond. They did not rebut. So now this is true. Hey, well, I'm, I'm going to get my, when I've, when I've completed my affidavit of um, truth to the CEO of the DVLA, Julia Leonard, I'm going to get it notarized and I will, Put that up with the uh, with the notary. I want to re- I want to reply That's from the probably response. Probably best talk about this offline. But yeah. But so yeah. when when you do that, then if you if if whomever it is, and you do exactly as you said just then, Dave, and you get it notarized and and it's sent back to the notary, and it's and it's all been rebutted, so it now becomes true. Mm. Is that document of any use to other people to mm. say, well, according to this affidavit? This is a. This is now true. Mm. You know, we've just proved because they didn't respond to it. Well, I mean, you, you know, if you could, you could actually take take them to court on the basis of your affidavit. You could, um, for instance, if you've been paying them with direct debit, you can actually do a direct debit um, clawback, right? Because now you've got proof that there's mm. been an error. Um, you know, and. Uh, there's several things you can do. You can actually make but, it the basis of a lien against them. But I suppose my point was, if one person does it, and 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 they and you and you say it's council tax, just for the sake of argument, and within that affidavit, that then the backwards and forwards, and it's been proved by the notary that actually that there is no reason to be paying council tax, and it's there in that one document. Cannot everybody else go? Well, there's the evidence. Well, as in use your affidavit. Use that person, you know, like Fred Bloggs' it. affidavit share, and yeah. say, look, you, th- Fred Bloggs has proved there is no liability or whatever it is. Can that now, because that then seems to be an instrument of law that's proved something, can that not now be used by everybody to yeah. say, actually, do you know what? Here's a, a basically a, a court case, as, as you said mm. in the paperwork. They've proved beyond all doubt legally or lawfully that the situation they were asking about is is yeah. not what it was so it doesn't have to be proven well, again yeah so you don't have to so not Keep everybody has it. to do it do you know are you understand what i'm saying I'm yeah not yeah it. technically though technically though um it is it is your truth yeah oh I see <laughs> so, um technically you know uh, i would say you everyone would have to do their own um, but, but it could be uh, the same, good, couldn't it? Good point. It, could, it, could, it? It could be the same affidavit. It is a really good point. It could be the same thing. If we, if we are talking about council and where the money goes, if it goes to funding war and everything, we could just, you know, do a standard letter, a standard affidavit here and all, all print one off or yes, if and get it signed by the notary. Karen, you can, but listen, don't just go down, down downloading templates and using them. No, 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 no. I, yeah, I, no, I know. I appreciate that. Just, but yeah, if, you, for, if yeah. you've if you've asked questions that they cannot answer, or it's proved that it is, I mean, it must surely be a statement of fact that everybody can use that. So, as we said, if the liability order actually does not exist in a printed form, and that is a fact, and somebody's put it in their affidavit, you could take that bit out and go, well, we know that's true. Yeah. We know that's true. That they can't. Re- but suddenly, one person can't go. Oh yeah, no, that you need it. You, you know, it's either true or it isn't. Yeah, because it's not a personal truth, is it? It's a, a, a statement of fact. Well, it's also well, it, like is David a per- said, it is a personal truth. Sorry, Dave. Sorry, it's, it, it's what Dave said. You need that evidence. If you're putting something down, you're in your state. If you're stating something, right. you're, you're So you my council that. tax is different to your council tax. 
or my well, yes. No, it's it's more like this is my true. I know this to be true. Right. If you just use a template for somebody else, you don't know if it's true or no. not. Right. You no. have to you have to know. And the no. thing about no. templates, and this this goes about every template. A template isn't for you to send to to whoever it is. The template is used when you read it and understand it. Mm. And then you write um, your, in your own words, what, you know, to, to whoever it is, without changing the, the force of the template. Right? Mm. It's, it's for you to understand. It's not for you to send to other people. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, because yeah, you don't, uh, I mean, if you use a template for making a jacket, you don't use the template, you use it over a material and you might cut it slightly differently or so. Yeah. You're not use. you're just using the template as your guide, aren't you? Yeah, and it's your yes. guide. Yeah, it's and yours. It's your it's guide and you can you. chop and change it and go, actually, you know, there's the power, these points. The power is in you understanding, not yeah. the paperwork. Yeah, right? yeah. your belief system. Very yeah, well. Yeah, because, Very well because most of it is the fact that... Um, what they're using against you is your guilty mind, right? Yeah, it's your yeah. guilty mind that they're using. And if you if you pick up a template yet, but you still got the guilty mind, they're going to use their psychology on you and run a roll, roll over you. Yeah. So, so can I just say on? I haven't read it all, but Zen again. I think he asked or she. Um, I asked, asked good questions. Instead of one person taking a, a taking on the council tax, can't we all get together and do a class action against the council? Sue them rather than sue them individually, or have you just answered that? Um, okay, well, the class action. Well, that's again playing in their system, right? right? You you to do your class action, you've got to get a lawyer to do it, and then it's going to be in their in their system, and it's you know it's against their it's against their um, interests to find in favour of us because. It's a money spinner. And, you know, at the end of the day, it's not all about money. It's about um, keeping us down. Now, this is the only reason why there are so many taxes and, and all that is to keep us, you know, working and, and trying to come up with money all the time and keep us in their, in their matrix. So it's, it's not in their interest to find for us. So, you know, yes, we've got all the evidence, but I'll just keep it tied up for years and years and years. Until right. we, until we lose interest, but but the more of us who do it, the more powerful it will be. Totally. Yeah, the more, the more of us who don't play. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, power. It's about it, it's about non-compliance. And if mm -hmm. enough of us stand up and say no, no more, they are done. Literally straight away. The moment we all stand up, they are finished. It's that simple. Well, I've got a group. I've got a group of us who are willing to issue the um the declaration of the declaration of sovereignty in the deed of trust and the revocable notice of consent um, acceptance to the council the local councils as a group but individually mm. okay so we're all doing it together but we're doing it as individuals right and there's obviously a lot of power in in well, exactly and, that. and again it's a lot of support for each of us this yes. No. Well, I think that's the key thing, isn't it? Yeah. Because um, we all need a bit of support when you're tackling a big ogre, the size of the, you know yeah. the size of the government, because they've yeah. got they've got lots of people who've done all this before, and know all the tricks. Well, and, and, you... uh, and of course, the challenge that you have is where people try to apply natural law, divine law, common law, and they start to say, "Well, we're going to arrest an individual," and then tr you know the first question that I always ask was, "Well, where are you going to take them?" Who's going to support what you're doing? And of course, that system will never support it. But remember, trial by jury is also about nullification or nullifying legislation. And of course, for me, that's where it will be at its strongest initially. Mm. Um, so, so trying to take an individual to task at this moment in time, one, you don't have the numbers, and two, their system will, will out-trump you just by its own power. So, well, so what would you say when, when Zen, okay, being a little bit provocative here, he says, I hate it when people say, enough, if, it, if enough of us do it, that's so stupid because 99.9% .9 will not ever. So what, what would you say to that? Well, so I, I, is, I would, go on, Dave. Go on, mate. I, I, was, I was just going to say that um, I start, I've just started an initiative to be leader of the country. Mm. And... Um, 
and the idea is not to be a boss or anything but to be an organizer so mm. one day you know if i get if i was to get um you know a, a, a majority of people uh, behind me and one day i said okay um council tax is abolished <laughs> okay so from now on um don't pay council tax if they uh, write to you write back and say the people have declared that council tax is, is now abolished right um if majority of people in the country just stop paying now that's it it's it's actually effectively abolished because they yes. can't do anything about it right so you know it needs I think it needs somebody to to just organize that and be the one to say, okay, well, we're not paying from now. <laughs> it's, it's happening slowly. It I, think, I think I think it's happening slowly. As we keep saying, we're all autonomous. We can't all come together. We can't fill out um, you know standard letters or templates. We've got to do it individually because we understand it. We believe it. And, and it's that spiritual side of thing, which I will always go back to because I think that is really important and not get other people to do it. Okay, get the information from other people, support everyone. But I think we are coming together. And I, I think it's a moment in time, to be honest. But I also think, uh, I, I also think that people are not squeezed enough just yet. So yes. people have to be squeezed. It has to become personal before you're mm -hmm. forced to do something. Now, we're Dave and, and, and us, what we're doing is once you squeeze people tightly enough, they also need something to go to that is commensurate with law and, and peace because people are, are inherently not violent. So when you start to look at an aggressive type retaliation, that takes a very, very specialised or, or you know, it's a very small group. But remember as well, you don't actually need the whole of a country to say no. You'd be amazed. 3% of this country could turn anything around if they really got together. Exactly. Well, it's a tipping point. Yeah, it's, it's a tipping point, isn't it? You yeah. know, eventually you're yeah. on the seesaw and just, you know, one or two more and then and then we, we, we tip over. Yeah, so, well, yeah, I... just remember back in 1918, the Russian Revolution, there was only a very small percentage of the population that supported it or even knew anything about it. And it was still fundamentally completely successful in its aims. You don't need everybody. You don't need everybody. Yeah. yeah. I suppose once you get going and, you, and people start realising, you know, people who are unsure or never heard of it, I always say this, that people are a bit like water. They'll take the line of least resistance. That once people start to see, oh, people are not yeah. paying, they're not being attacked, they're not being, yeah. you know, people will just join them, you know, because once they realise actually it's right and proper, when something yeah. is, is, they can see the sense in it and other people have effectively done the, the yeah. challenging, enough of them have done that. But, then, but, then the snowball just comes absolutely. afterwards, you know, oh, well, I'm not going to do it either, actually, look yeah. at me. There's, there's a very good video of, of um, I think it's a, it's a festival called Sasquatch or Sasquatch or something like that. Oh, the in America. Of yeah, you know the one? And so one guy gets up and, yeah, he just dances and looks a bit funny, but he's in his element, happy, and everybody's looking at him. And then it's the second person that is the tipping point because as soon as the second person follows and does the dance... They all join in. They thought, "Oh, he can do it. We can all do it." And and that's all it is. It's just getting that information. And they kind of make it legitimate. Yeah, don't they? yeah. And it doesn't matter how you're dancing because you're all part of it. Mm. And there's also that saying about first they came for, and I can't remember who they came for. The gypsies, the I don't know. Eventually, they will come for you. So I think we're not all being pushed enough. A lot of us, we oh. know stuff is going on. You know, we're struggling to pay our bills and 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 struggling with so many ways, but we're getting through. And eventually. Because I thought with, you know, with the stuff that's happened, you know, recently, all that sort of kind of stuff, eventually when people started doing that, they'll put two and two together, but they haven't put two and two together. We are you know, still I've... too comfortable. We, we, are, we, are. we are still too comfortable. We still have bread and circuses, pizza in the freezer, beer and but everything gold. else. We need to be less Netflix. comfortable. Yeah, we do indeed. We will. I think soon we will. Talk for yourself about the beer and pizza in the cup. <laughs> and Netflix. Well, I like Netflix. <laughs> yeah. can, can I just point out, Richard, you got, we've got 16 minutes left. 
Um, Where did that go? I don't know. Chit chit chat. It's lovely. Joinder. Somebody way back when said, "Can you talk about Joinder?" And I know that might be quite simple for some people, but those that are learning, can one of you talk about Joinder? What is it? And, and a lean as well, like a lean to, a lavy. <laughs> A lean-to, a lean yes, to. I That's could do with a lean-to. Yeah. <laughs> it blew it down in the wind. Um, joinder. Yeah. Okay. Who... Dave. Um, right, so... Um, okay, so the, the hierarchy is that you've got the most high, whoever you believe that to be, you know, as above everything, okay? Below the most high is every man, woman, and child on, on the face of the earth, okay? That's a sovereign level, Okay. Nobody apart from the most high can tell you what to do, right? Below you is the government because we created government collectively. So the government is below us, okay? Below government, government created all these fictional entities, okay? Taxpayer, driver, resident, occupier, all these, all these fictional entities, okay, that only exist on paper. Mm. Joinder is the uh, process of you confessing to being one of these fictional entities under government. Because yes. while you are in your sovereign status, nobody can apply anything to you. All right. So, you know, you've got the right to travel. So um, you can, you know, exercise your rights and uh, travel on, in any way you see fit on the roads, on the public roads. But as soon as you uh, confess to being a driver, well, now all sorts of uh, uh, fees, taxes, insurances, uh, rules and regulations apply to you because now you've uh, admitted to being under government as a, um, as a driver. And that's, that's you committing an act of joinder. You're joining yourself to one of these fictional entities. And there's lots and lots and lots of them. And there's lots of different uh, tricks they can pull to make you uh, or to get you to accidentally uh, create joinder. Could, could that also be something simple like opening a letter, a, you know, a, a window letter that comes through the post? If you open or it... Or opening a letter, yes, because yeah. one of the, one of the uh, fictional entities is known as a person. And so if, uh, you know, um, your, your supposed name is in all capitals or it's got a title, Mr. Mrs. Miss, Right. Well, then that's to a person. And if you open that letter, you're either breaking the law by opening mail that doesn't belong to you or you're admitting that you're that character. So in most of my templates, the very first question I ask is, um, is this is this notice to me? All right. Because it, see, it looked like it had my name on it, but um, I might be opening somebody else's mail in, you know, by mistake. So can you confirm that this is to... Um, myself, Dave, the man, and not this Mr. David Murphy. So can it, you? It, that's really. That, I mean, I think that you've put that incredibly. Oh, hello. It's, it's you've got the, the, the fog. The, I'm back the in the old Dave's <laughs> gone into fog, fog down mode. The East Coast, um, yeah, but before you disappear, or he's going to punch the uh, camera. He did that last time. Um, before we start, and it was very effective. Here he is. Look. Oh, there he goes. He's back. Uh, <laughs> is back can you if i mean most of us let's face it will have opened letters with what appears to be a name with the mr miss mrs on it um on it are you able then to say to the to these people who've contacted you and go actually i want to correct that i've discovered that that's not me i'm you know really sorry i've discovered for whatever reason or i've woken up or however you want to phrase it that that's no longer me, or that's never been me. I've been deceived. I am now correcting my standing, um, and that's not me. Just to let you know, thank you very much. Please stop sending that stuff to me. That really isn't me, because I'm some somebody or something else. They'll continue to send the, the notices and letters to that straw man because they've got that straw man's name and the address and the date of birth. So they'll continue to do it whether you say you've corrected it or not. But asking that question, right? Well, it's, first of all, it's it's taking you off the hook because, you know, you're, you're saying, you know, I may have made a mistake here, right? So mm. please correct it for me, yeah? And, um, and now it's getting them to actually admit to try, or trying to get them to admit to the fraud. 
Yes, which I suppose they won't do. They won't do, but but uh, you know when they respond to you, you can end you can end the conversation right there. You know you haven't you haven't um, clarified whether this is to me the man or or to this person, right? You know I'm I'm going to give you another chance to clarify that. Um, otherwise, I'm going to be burning any letter that comes to to that name. Yes, but I, I suppose my point is simply that. In the you know if you're starting afresh you could do that because they don't know who you are right from the word go. No, but if but... you've been de been dealing with your passport, your mm. uh, all all the documents that we all have and we've all gone and we've all acquiesced and opened the envelope mm. and gone oh mm. yeah I'll and sign this bill. and whatever. Yeah. Um, how do you get out of all of that? My my favourite phrase, it has come to my attention. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that, that, that's what I was saying, though. That's yeah. what I was saying. Is you're saying it's come to my attention that this isn't me. I'm ever yeah. since I've opened right, these no, in error. You don't have to. You don't have to hit it. Um, go straight for it like a you know like hitting a brick wall. You you can say it's come to my attention that um, this might not be me, right? Because I'm, I'm I'm a living man, and this seems to be um, to somebody else. Can you clarify that, please? Oh right! Oh okay. It's always, it's always best. Yeah, sending. It's back. always best to approach it like you're a stupid muggle. Right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, that's all right. I can do I that know very well. <laughs> and of course, but what what Dave has very eloquently said is that he's asking a question. The person that holds the power when it comes to joiner is the person that's answering the questions, and the most common form of that would be when the police ask you your name. That's the first thing they want. Yes. Create joiner, and that would be what most people are, are more familiar with, I reckon. So, so I mean, ultimately, if you say, I think, I, you know, it's come to my attention, this might not actually be me, and they're saying, well, that's what we've got down on our computer, and you're effectively saying, oh, that's a shame. Because <laughs> no, you're clarifying it by saying, you know, I'm, I'm Dave, the living man. Are, are you yeah. addressing me? Because are you addressing? It seems to be to this Mr. David Murphy person. Yes. A straw man. Mm. Yeah, are you sure? And, and they can't really prove it because they can't. Mm. How do they prove it unless they say, mm. oh, well, we'll correct it and write to Dave the living man, which they won't do. They won't do because they are trying to you yeah. know, go through your straw man. So, um, and, again, it's, it's, it's a question of asking them questions that they should be able to give you, right, if yes. they're being honest. <laughs> but they won't because it gives the game away. And right, St cool. Stephen Moore here says um, about case law, Adams versus Linzel, 1818, uh, postal contract offer and acceptance, when the post comes in, if it's not rebutted in 72 hours, then you've accepted the offer, whether that's council tax, gas, water, electric, section 92 BOE. So you have 72 hours. Doesn't apparently. I mean, if you're on holiday, how, how can oh, you do that? Don't go on holiday. Don't go on Sit by your post box <laughs> in case a letter comes to, you know, that, it is a ridiculous, that, that can't be. Well, that apparently case law. It is, it is standard, business pro, it's standard business practice, 72 hours, three days. Oh, I see. Um, which is why I, I say whenever you get any of this stuff, you send, you send it back to them. You make a copy of your records. You send it back to them. Right, um, with your notices, right? Because so you open it you though. Hold, you you open you it. Open it, but you and can take a copy, right? Take a copy but, and then. Did you just acquiesce to them? Haven't you? You've just yeah, given them. Yeah, join yeah, them. yeah. That's this what is I mean. Where it gets all very confusing. <laughs> that's right. If you've opened well, that, it, then... again, first question: Is this to me, the man, oh. or is to this, to this, uh, oh. this legal fiction? It has come right? to my attention because I've opened a letter that is this isn't for me. So have it back. But why yeah, did you yeah. open it? If it's, I'm if not it's sure. to you, then yeah. Oh, it looked okay. like it looked like my name. It, right. You know, but uh, I might have opened this open this by mistake. By mistake. Can you, can you prove to me this is to me the man, or is it to this person? Um, otherwise, I'll have to make an apology to Mr. David Murphy. Yeah. It's a bit of fun in there. When, when you get over the fear, there's a little bit of fun in this, isn't there? When you know, because mm. when you're sending it back to these clerks or officers. They, they, part, most of them are clueless anyway because they're part of the, the system, you know, and I think we have to understand that and not dislike them and hate them intensely because that half of them don't know what they're doing, although a lot of them, if they put a uniform on, they can get a little bit, you know, assertive. But I think, I think that needs to come into it, what we're doing here, because I know when, when one of the, the guys on the panel is saying, you know, we've got to be kind to these people because they are not educated. 
they're part of it they they you know they're, they're just part of it because they do not know and they haven't thought to ask questions it's it's a game and yeah. uh when i when i'm dealing with like a parking ticket or something and uh, they say oh we issued this this ticket this pcn to your car you know i wrote back and said um i asked my car if he was going to pay but it didn't <laughs> answer to me you know <laughs> it, you just have fun with the thing it's a, it's a game but i didn't have fun when they came to take my car the other day i, I paid the fine okay. i paid it they 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 clamp your car right you say t- tell them i'm going to give you 10 minutes to remove your property from my property or I'm cutting a damn thing off, right? Well, yeah, but they, and I'm they charging didn't... you 80 quid for my uh, clamp removal fees. But they weren't, they were going to take it. So they were going to take it. So that Did was their threat. they not No, no. I just had this horrible letter and he said, I'm coming, you know, coming back oh, sometime. Oh, yeah, don't worry about the letter. <laughs> well, I know. I I think you've got to choose your battles as well. Oh, I mean, now. Yeah, now Sit I'm, in your I'm... car. Sit exactly. in your car. Sleep in, my sit car, in your said. vehicle. Oh, well, I, 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 that's uh, interesting because I interviewed a lady who did sit in her car and the police came and dragged her out. Oh, really? But yeah. guy, it... Also, guys, don't forget, right, I've done a, a tutorial on how to cut clamps off. If you go onto my Facebook account and scroll down and you will find I've done a tutorial on how to remove them. Quite easy. So do cut it. the van in half. Um, no, easy. Easy. So listen, we've come to the end of the show, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we go, it would be great so that the members of the panel can just promote where you can find out more about them and the stuff that they do. Uh, so as Matt, you're there and you're talking about your Facebook channel. Can you just tell us um, where it is and how we find it? Yeah, I mean, go on to um, www.hopesussex.co.uk or go on to the Hope Sussex um, Facebook page or Matt Single Facebook and there's loads of information of all the things we've got going on but don't forget please there is going to be a fantastic festival 23rd to the 26th of August it's the Hope Sussex Music Freedom Festival it's going to be fantastic we've got some great people Danny Rampling is going to be headlining and loads of other names to be released so we've got some wonderful stuff going on at Hope Sussex Thank you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show my age now. I thought you said Charlotte Rampling. Uh, oh, but then uh, she's, I don't know Charlotte Rampling. Charlotte Rampling was an actress from the 50s and 60s. Oh, oh. <laughs> Mick knows Charlotte Rampling. <laughs> um, so, Mick. Matt, uh, yeah, Mick. <laughs> yeah, basically, I'm not necessarily uh, involved in, in, in the law at the moment, but, but I specialise in mindset. Anything that anyone wants to know about the manipulation use of language, go to www.spectrumtc.co.uk. Brilliant. You must. Uh, we must do a show together sometime. Uh, yeah. I think mindset would be something that the audience would love to hear. Well, then I can. You know, what I can also show people is 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 the actual patterns that are used and why they're so effective when politicians spew them out to the masses. Yeah. Brilliant. Uh, Dave. Oh, right, well... Um, I didn't need to press a button. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, well, you can get my website. It's www.allegedlydave.com. I, I have a Telegram group for Q&A. It's called Ask Allegedly Dave. And uh, you can find my videos on... If you go to any of the uh, video sharing platforms and put um, at Allegedly Dave, you'll find them. Fantastic. Brilliant. Um, Tony. Do well, you have? I'm not on Facebook. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, you can find out the, about the workshops that I, I, I don't say I run them, I organise. Um, uh, on the Sovereign Project Live, Sovereign Project dot Live website, there's a list of workshops that are being run. Um, they're not all over the country, but there's different, lots of different locations over the country. Fantastic, brilliant. And um, if. Uh... I'll ask Karen to put all those in an email to me and then I can put them all in the description. In the description, yeah. Um, but there might be a few... Well, I'm going to be away for a, um, a day or so, so um, it might take a bit of time. Fine. But um, anyway, you, you've heard it all there. 
I would love to thank my wonderful panel, oh, our wonderful panel, our I should say. Oh, um, bless you. <laughs> it's, 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 I didn't do anything. I <laughs> you did, you've done the show. I just switched the cameras on. <laughs> uh, the wonderful panel for coming on the show uh, and being brilliant. Um, and Karen, of course, for organising it. We decided to add a couple of mm. extra of these. We, we have. We have. I mean, next week's not Friday. It's going to be Thursday because it's a good Friday. Um, so we're doing a Thursday. It's going to be slightly different. I think we're trying to get as many of you clever clogs on the show as possible. Um, obviously, there'll be a live participation with the audience, so there'll be some questions. But if there's going to be like five or six of you, I think it's just really nice to, to give support to the public, to see you all there in your little blankety-blank or celebrity square boxes. Um, just, yeah, just, just coming together. So that will be next week. And then on the 5th and the 12th, the following two Fridays, we've got more people, new faces as well. So as I said earlier, we've got uh, Sovereign Pete, Pete Wilson, Cardi Spell, um, and I think Andy Barlow hasn't been on yet. So, you know, the, the, and the, which is wonderful about this, they, they keep coming. You, know, we, you, you do realise you've just done three talent shows in there. Celebrity I know. Squares, New Faces I know. and Blankety Blank. Blankety Blank. I well, know. that's not really a talent show. But isn't that extraordinary? <laughs> well, it's entertainment. You well, said it's an entertainment. And in a minute it'll be good night from me. <laughs> and good night from him. Um, <laughs> uh, I'd also like to thank uh, the wonderful Julia who's been in there moderating, making sure that the chat has uh, been uh, very good, which she has done. Thank you very much, Julia. And also to you watching and those of you in the chat, uh, big, big thanks for coming along and supporting the show. Really appreciate that. Do share the show with your friends on social media and all of the rest of it, because the more people that know that there is a lawful remedy to some of the problems that are being pushed down our throats, when you've got experts like the team that we've had tonight and previously, mm. it is good to know that we're not, um, we're not stuck with the, uh, the legislation uh, all the time. Um, it's been terrific, hasn't it? It's been another really good show. Great, great guys, yeah. So there we go. That's it's our pleasure. Well, um, we'll be back again next week, but it's Thursday because it would have been Good Friday. And then we've got two more the Fridays after that. But for now, that's two hours of anybody's thing. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea. Thanks all. Thank you, Richard. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Yeah. Take care. And Thank you.